Almost everybody loves rain. But here is something you may not have thought about. Every raindrop falls from a height of 2 to 3 kilometers. And as you might recall from physics class, any object falling toward Earth accelerates due to gravity. So, a raindrop falling from that height should be hitting us at around 850 kilometers per hour, almost the same speed as a bullet fired from a regular gun. Then, why don't these raindrops pierce through our skin? Why don't we even feel a sting? The first answer that might come to mind is, it is just water, not a rock. So, it simply splashes and breaks apart when it hits us, rather than piercing through. But wait, this same water, when used in a high-speed jet, can cut through metal. That technology is called water jet cutting, and the speed of the water inside that jet is around 2,700 kilometers per hour. With that, we can slice through even steel. So, if water at 2,700 kilometers per hour can cut iron, should not a raindrop traveling at one-third that speed at least cause a tiny injury when it hits our skin? Let us look at another example. Imagine firing a bullet straight up into the sky. According to the same laws of motion, the bullet should return to the ground at nearly the same speed it had when it was fired. But in reality, when it falls back, it comes down much slower, sometimes with only one-fifth of its original speed. Now, think about another situation, a scene we have all seen in movies. A villain throws the hero's parachute bag out of a plane. The hero jumps out a few seconds later, catches the parachute in mid-air, wears it, and lands safely. At first glance, this seems impossible. The person who jumps later should never be able to catch up with a parachute that started falling earlier. Gravity would not allow it. But here is the twist. This is not just cinematic fiction. Scientifically, it is absolutely possible. The mystery behind all these, the raindrop, the falling bullet, and the mid-air parachute catch, comes down to the same phenomenon. What is it? Let us explore in this video. Hi friends, and welcome to another episode of Science Simplified for All. The acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. But to make calculations easier, let us temporarily round that off to 10 meters per second squared. Pay special attention to the unit, meters per second squared. What does that mean? It means that any object falling freely towards Earth will gain speed at a rate of 10 meters per second for every second it falls. Let us take an example. Imagine dropping a 1 kilogram iron ball from the top of a tall building. As it falls, its speed keeps increasing. After 1 second, its speed will be 10 meters per second. After 2 seconds, it will be 20 meters per second. After 3 seconds, it will be 30 meters per second. And so on. That is, the object's speed changes by 10 meters per second every second. That is why the unit is written as meters per second, per second, or simply meters per second squared. This acceleration is the same for all objects falling towards Earth. So if you drop a 1 kilogram iron ball and a 5 kilogram iron ball from the same height at the same time, they will fall at the same speed and reach the ground together. The heavier one will not fall faster just because it has more weight. This may feel counterintuitive at first. But we can explain it clearly using Newton's laws of motion. In fact, even before Newton, Galileo had already demonstrated this through experiments centuries ago. So, for now, let us not go into the details of the laws. Let us just take it for granted. But what if we drop something like a paper ball or a sponge ball or even a feather from that same building along with the iron ball? In that case, they will not fall at the same speed the paper, sponge and feather will all fall much slower. The rule that says everything falls at the same speed does not seem to apply here and that confuses many people. The real culprit here is the air in our atmosphere. Whenever we talk about the laws of physics, we often add a small condition, assuming there is no friction. That same condition applies here as well. Only in the absence of air resistance will all objects fall at the same speed. This has been tested inside a large vacuum chamber where all the air is removed. In such a chamber, when a feather and a bowling ball are dropped together, they fall at exactly the same speed and hit the ground together. 
So even though we say all freely falling objects experience an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, the truth is, no object actually falls freely on Earth. Every object experiences air resistance during its fall. This resistance is different for different objects. It depends on the object's surface area, its shape, its smoothness, and its density. That is why a paper ball or feather falls more slowly than an iron ball. Between a 1 kilogram and a 5 kilogram iron ball, all these properties are almost the same. Only the size is slightly different. So, the air resistance they experience is nearly equal and they fall together. But paper, sponge or feathers experience much more resistance and that slows them down. Inside a vacuum chamber where there is no air at all, everything, no matter how light or heavy, falls at the same speed. Now, let us come back to our original question about raindrops. A raindrop falling from a height of 3 kilometers under an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared should theoretically reach the ground at a speed of 850 kilometers per hour. There is nothing wrong with the math. But have you ever noticed something else? When we ride a bike at just 60 kilometers per hour during rain, the raindrops hitting our face can cause pain. That is because the bike is moving forward at 60 km per hour. So the raindrops hitting us also have a relative speed of 60 km per hour. And if that speed alone is enough to cause pain, then why do we not feel anything when raindrops fall directly on us from such great heights? There is only one reason. Even though the raindrop starts falling from a very high altitude, it never reaches a speed of 850 km per hour. In fact, when it reaches us, it is moving at only around 10 to 15 kilometers per hour. The reason? It is something called terminal velocity. Earlier, we discussed how any object falling through Earth's atmosphere experiences air resistance. This resistance depends on many things, like the object's shape, surface area and density. But the factor that matters the most is speed. The faster an object moves through air, the more air resistance it faces. Slower moving objects experience less air resistance. That is why fast vehicles are given smooth aerodynamic shapes at the front to reduce drag. Slower vehicles do not need such designs. Now here is something important. When an object begins to fall, the only force acting on it is gravity, pulling it downward. At that moment, its speed is very low, so the air resistance is minimal. The object accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared. But as the speed increases, air resistance also increases, and this resistance always acts in the opposite direction of motion. So, for a falling object, gravity pulls it downward, while air resistance pushes upward against the fall. The downward gravitational force stays roughly constant throughout the fall because gravity does not change much over a few kilometers. But the upward force from air resistance keeps increasing as the object picks up speed. Eventually, a moment comes when the upward air resistance exactly balances the downward gravitational force. At that point, the net force on the object becomes zero. And when the net force is zero, the object stops accelerating. It does not stop falling. It simply continues falling at a constant speed. You might wonder, if the forces are balanced, why does the object not just hover at that height? The answer lies in Newton's first law of motion. At the moment when the forces balance, the object already has a certain downward velocity. And since no net force is acting anymore, that velocity remains unchanged. Even if the object's speed drops slightly, air resistance will reduce and gravity will take over again, increasing the speed. So the object naturally stabilizes at a constant speed. This constant speed, where the force of gravity is exactly balanced by the force of air resistance, is called terminal velocity. Because of this phenomenon, objects falling through Earth's atmosphere do not keep accelerating forever at 9.8 meters per second squared. Once an object reaches its terminal velocity, it stops accelerating and continues to fall at a constant speed. This terminal velocity is not the same for all objects. It depends on the object's size, density, shape, and surface texture. For a raindrop, the terminal velocity is only around 10 to 15 kilometers per hour. That means, no matter how high the raindrop falls from, 
its speed will never go beyond this limit. That is why we do not feel any pain when raindrops hit our skin. But the case of a falling bullet is very different. First, a bullet is much heavier than a raindrop. Second, its shape is sharply pointed and its surface is smooth. Because of this, it experiences much less air resistance. So, a much higher speed is required for air resistance to balance its weight. That is why the terminal velocity of a bullet is significantly higher than that of a raindrop. In short, the shape and density of a falling object play a big role in deciding its terminal velocity. When a bullet is fired straight upward, depending on the type of gun and the bullet, it can reach speeds of 850 km per hour or more. While going up, the bullet travels with its pointed end facing forward, reducing air resistance. That allows it to reach a great height. But on its way back down, the bullet may tumble or spin in the air. It may not fall with the pointed end facing down. And if the flat side is facing down during the fall, the air resistance increases significantly. As a result, the bullet reaches a much lower terminal velocity. By the time it hits the ground, it may be traveling at only one-fifth of its original speed. In most cases, it is no longer lethal. However, if the bullet is fired at a slight angle instead of straight up, the story changes. In that case, the bullet may maintain its pointed orientation both while rising and falling. That reduces air resistance during the fall as well. The bullet may retain a very high speed when it reaches the ground, high enough to kill someone. This is exactly why firing bullets into the sky is strictly banned in many countries. What goes up must come down. And sometimes it comes down fast enough to be deadly. When a skydiver jumps out of a plane, gravity pulls them downward and their speed starts increasing. But once the speed reaches around 200 km per hour, it stops increasing. From that point onward, the skydiver continues to fall at that constant speed. That is their terminal velocity. This value of 200 km per hour applies when the skydiver is falling belly down with arms and legs spread out. In that posture, air resistance is higher. But if the skydiver falls head first, keeping their body tight, the air resistance becomes much lower. In that case, the terminal velocity can rise to around 290 km per hour. And if they wear a tight, low-drag suit, and align their body perfectly, the terminal velocity can go up to 500 km per hour. By changing the shape and posture of the body during the fall, a skydiver can control how fast they fall. This very idea is what makes those parachute rescue scenes in movies scientifically possible, where someone jumps after a falling parachute and catches up. When a skydiver opens their parachute while falling at 200 km per hour, what really happens is a massive drop in terminal velocity. The parachute increases the surface area, increasing air resistance dramatically. As a result, the skydiver's terminal velocity becomes much lower, allowing them to land safely. So here is what we must understand. Any object falling through Earth's atmosphere will accelerate only up to a certain point. Once it reaches terminal velocity, it stops speeding up and continues falling at that constant speed. In a way, this is a blessing. If not for terminal velocity, a raindrop falling from high in the sky could easily reach a speed fast enough to cause serious injury. Or worse, that is the real beauty of terminal velocity. Everything we discussed so far applies to objects falling within Earth's atmosphere. But what about objects falling into Earth's atmosphere from space? This happens all the time. Like with meteors. When meteors enter the atmosphere, they are often traveling at speeds of 20 to 30 kilometers per second. That is kilometers per second, not kilometers per hour. These speeds are far higher than any terminal velocity. Before air resistance can slow them down enough, they either burn up due to intense heat or hit the ground with incredible force. You may have heard that the escape velocity from Earth is 11.2 kilometers per second. That is the speed an object must reach to overcome Earth's gravity and enter space. But here is an interesting point. That 11.2 km per second value does not account for air resistance. In real life, an object trying to leave Earth must go even faster, depending on its shape and the drag it faces. And since air resistance is different for different shapes, 
there is no single fixed number for real escape velocity. It changes based on the object. Through this video, I hope you now understand just how much of a difference air resistance can make in physics. From bullets to raindrops, from skydivers to meteors, the atmosphere is not just a background. It plays a major role in shaping what really happens. If you found this video interesting, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And for more such science videos, subscribe to this channel and tap the bell icon. Thank you.